There's a lot of awkward things in life, like the handshake fist bump dilemma, or waving back to someone who is waving to the dude behind you, or the you too situation. Enjoy your meal, sir. Thanks, you too. Actually, wait, 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 no, 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 no. But on this long list of things that will keep you up at night, I feel like school dances lands itself in the top three, bro. Cause it's like, is it a party or is it a school event? Are, are we hitting the Dougie or are we just standing awkwardly in the corner? There's just too many questions, bro. Like another question, who the fuck hired this guy to be the DJ? Like, I don't know how much they pay this dude, but it can't be anything over 50 bucks. I remember at my first middle school dance, I seen the DJ walk in with all his gear and shit and I thought, damn, look at those big ass speakers this dude knows what he's doing for sure hey hey stick man middle are we ready to turn up yeah let's go. one two a one two three let's go so I walk over there to give bro some song requests that he so desperately needs and as I walk up to this dude's expensive ass setup, I look down at his laptop and this motherfucker's on Spotify and he, he's moving around the volume slider like he's doing some shit. Like bro, I could have done this shit for free. Nah, trust me bro, I know what I'm doing dude a break from the ads now to be honest it was really the middle school dances that had me fucked up like you took a bunch of self-conscious prepubescent little kids and threw on some music and told them to dance with each other like shit of course they're gonna start hitting those fortnite emotes bro that's all they know how to do like these grade sixes are fresh out of elementary school there's no way you'll catch one of these youngins asking a girl to dance like they're still scared of catching cooties bro or what about the grade sevens these kids were straight menaces like i remember at my grade seven dance there was a duo we'll call them we'll call them greg and roderick greg and roderick would run up on some unsuspecting students and greg would slide behind them on his hands and knees and roderick would casually strike up a conversation and just when the poor guy was expecting at least roderick would shove his ass causing the unsuspecting victim to trip and eat shit and they went around to damn near everyone pulling this shit until one time they messed with the wrong dude <laughs> hey bro it's just a prank now grade eights these boys are damn near in high school. They don't dance. It it'll ruin their street cred, bruh. Instead, they prefer mosh pits. Rap, EDM, fucking smooth jazz. It doesn't matter what song. These grade eights will be relentlessly jumping up and down for no apparent reason. And soon, these grade eights will turn into freshmen. All that street cred they once had, gone. If you push one of these freshmen into the middle of a dance circle, he'll stress so hard, he'll start malfunctioning and hit those fucking Fortnite dances again. Now grade 10s. Most of these grade 10s are a little self-conscious, but if you throw one of them into the dance circles... Let's go, Michael. Whoa, let's see it. Yeah, let's Michael. go. <laughs> guys, what? I don't know how to dance. Just fucking Michael. Do it. Let's go, Michael. Fuck. Well, I guess I can bust out a few dance moves. All of a sudden, dude's got moves like Jagger. Come to find out, bro's been practicing him for this moment in his room for months so once these grade 10s soon become sophomores those youtube tutorials start paying off for real and if they're lucky they might even catch some cooties bro and these seniors just simply don't give a fuck bro watch this i'm about to hit the worm what you know how to hit the worm <laughs> no Damn. And I'm not done flaming this fucking DJ. Like, this dude be leaving my balls more blue than Squidward. Pause. These bitches lost. Oh, oh hell. Nah. I, is that lo fi? And then out of nowhere, really quick, the DJ will throw on some heat and it'll have everybody turning up. But just as fast as Pop Smoke got that shit jumping, Ed Sheeran shut that bitch right back down. Like, mixing drill with the shape of you has to be some sort of felony, bro. Like, like, tell me this dude deserves to roam the streets freely after pulling some shit like that. In fact, funny story. I, I had seen the DJ after the dance in the parking lot one time. And um, we walked up and uh, we jumped the fuck out of him. All right, but not all DJs were out here committing war crimes on my ears. Like, you know the DJ was on to some shit when he got the students and the teachers turning up. Like, you play the right song and these teachers will forget they're on chaperoning duty. Shit, even the principal will start wilding out. Once you got the right song playing, motherfuckers will get hype over anything like remember how hype it was when someone would land a flip in the middle of a mosh pit 
Oh shit, remember how hype it was when someone didn't land a flip in the middle of a mosh pit? These motherfuckers were excited as ever like they didn't just witness a dude snap his neck. Poor guy's probably getting trampled down there. Rest in peace, sacrifice his life for a few Snapchat memories. But you know that one song, that when the DJ throws that hoe on, everybody knows what to do. Motherfuckers will run in from the bathroom, teachers will hop in, the Redditors will hop off the bleachers, and the school dance will be looking like something straight out of high school music. Bro. Speaking of high school musical, back in the day I knew a dude named Troy. I fucked with Troy, but let's just say he had a little bit of a lean gut. He, he was built like T Grizzly. Nah, fuck that. He was built like DJ Khaled. And I remember this dude, Troy, was just coming off a of school suspension. But for whatever reason at the dance, this motherfucker must have been looking for another one. Because Troy came up to me talking about how he was going to beat Jordan Johnson's ass at the dance tonight. And honestly, I ain't believing him. So once the dance came around, he was beefing JJ every chance that he got. Until soon, JJ wasn't going to stand for it. Now, a school dance is simply the best time for a school fight to take place for the dude who wins for the dude who loses you literally have every single motherfucker in your school gathered in one place to get several different 4k angles of you getting pieced up so troy was really putting everything on the line here because jj was known for handing out whoopings like food stamps but to be fair troy loved food regardless jj wasn't scared in fact he threw the first punch boom but Troy ate that shit like a Wendy's 4 for 4 combo. And instantly, the entire school gathered in a circle. The circle was so big, there was no escaping. They were gonna have to fight to the death. But the DJ was so locked in that he was completely oblivious to what was happening. He was playing some happy-go-lucky ass shit. Oh, shit. Ooh. Damn. Yo, get his ass. Let's go. Please. Beat his go ass, Troy. JJ. Yo, so so I'm Jordan, Jordan Johnson. Now, the moral of that story is uh, th don't get into a fight at the school dance. Uh, unless you know you're going to win. Now, on another note, asking someone to dance is a very important topic when it comes to school dances. Now, girls, I I'm sorry. I can't help you with this one. I've never asked a dude to dance before. But, boys... Shit, I can't help you either. I'm like over 15 with this shit. But I do know someone who can. I'm talking about the homie Bob. So Bob, uh, how do you ask a girl to dance? W watch and learn. I, w is this motherfucker moonwalking right now? Oh, oh shit. Oh, what the, what the fuck? We are currently facing a life-threatening epidemic that is threatening the lives of many teens around the world. Oh, what's that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, it, it has been brought to my attention that there is a new strain let loose that is infecting more teens than ever. The strain is propylene glycol formaldehyde. Street name, Guava Ice. <clears throat> so stay safe out there and back to you, Linda. What? Oh, oh shit! Man, way back when, somewhere in Timbuktu, a homo sapien found a plant by the name of tobacco, and for whatever reason, somewhere in this dude's caveman brain, he decided, Huh, <sighs> me. Smoke. Now. And that he did. And as humans slowly evolved, smoking did too. And soon, motherfuckers went from looking all old and wise, smoking these big old pipes, to soon smoking cigars on some mafia boss shit, which turned into cigarettes. Now, back in the day, if you were stressing, Doc would prescribe you a pack of good old cigarettes. Sore throat? Cigarettes. Oh, you got a cough? Here. Smoke a cigarette. But after a while, people's teeth started looking all British and shit, so they decided, Boy, I don't think these are healthy, innit? So we decided we needed to make cigarettes better, and you know what makes everything better? The letter E. Your mail's taking too long to come in? Email. Wait, wait, what's that? You, you want to play sports, but your ass at every single sport? Esports. Oh, you got daddy issues? E-girl. So of course, when people realize cigarettes are killing them, 
e-cigarettes man one thing leads to another and shit you got yourself a vaporizer gen y gtx box mod with three usb charging ports a speaker and a six inch led touchscreen that can play flappy bird like vaping is just getting a little too advanced bro like i remember one time i was chilling in the washroom with my homie billy and of course a motherfucker walks in with a vape but this was no regular vape no this shit looked like a gadget straight out of fucking star wars yo you want to hit uh a hit? A, a hit of your iPhone? <laughs> iPhone? <laughs> this is that eSmoke FTX 763 third series, my boy. Watch this. Yo, did he just hotbox the whole bathroom in one hit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes the fuck I did. And this shit's 100, Nick. Holy shit, well, where did you find 100, Nick? Yeah, uh, I ended up mixing my 50, Nick guava juice with my 50, Nick blueberry ice, and it just kind of added up to 100. Bro, I, I don't think that's how it works. Uh, shut up, my mom's calling me. Yo, fuck you, mom. And that was the moment I realized there really is levels to this shit. Level one. Level one is the type of dude who isn't addicted, but he'll occasionally take a hit of somebody's device. But level two, bro's borderline addicted, but he's still in the denial phase. Bro, are you addicted to vaping? Addicted? <laughs> Nah, nah, I don't even vape like that, bro. Shit. Do five jumping jacks right now. Bro, what? That, that's easy. One, two, three, <coughs> four. <coughs> oh, shit. Oh, the, the f Level three, the fiend. This motherfucker is strapped up with some nicotine at all times. And even when he has a vape in his hand, this dude will ask for yours. And God forbid, if this fiend loses his vape, this motherfucker will be stressing like he just lost his only child. A fiend without a vape is the exact equivalent of one of these purple minions. Dude will be itching for that shit and lord knows what that man will do for a fix. Level 4, the fiend who sells vapes. At this point, this dude's whole life revolves around vapes. In fact, I'm pretty sure they don't even breathe oxygen anymore. Like in order to breathe, they need to inhale some chemicals that, that, that I can't even spell. Which on, honestly, it doesn't even say that much. Like. I can't spell a lot of shit, but I'm what I'm trying to say is their bodies have just fully adapted in order to consume as much nicotine as possible. They breathe that shit, they drink the vape juice, and when they're hungry, shit, they just munch on the vape itself. And the worst part is they can't even run out of vapes. Like shit, they are the plug. This motherfucker's just the CEO of getting high on his own supply. Like dude is his own number one customer. Level 5. This motherfucker, bro. Like why do you need a LED touchscreen on your vape bro like you already have a fault whoa wait, wait, wait. did did you just order that pizza from your vape mm -hmm. shit Where, where'd you get this from and don't get me started on these flavors bro like tell me why these motherfuckers can make a vape juice and call that shit early riser and that shit literally tastes like a wednesday at 6 a.m like what the fuck type of ingredients mixed together to taste like a wednesday at 6 a.m but early riser isn't even the weirdest flavor on the market because if you're feeling the family dinner vibes you can get a rotisserie chicken flavor or if your breath is smelling nice and fresh you could fuck that shit up quick with some garlic flavor juice and they even got bacon yeah yeah i'm not gonna lie that shit sounds fire as fuck and lastly now i don't even know if i can say this on youtube right now but shit you can even get yourself some worcestershire wor wor worcestershire wor worcestershire Worcestershire sh But regardless, I think we all know the home of nicotine. The eternal hot box. The communal vape sesh. It's the high school bathrooms, man. You walk into one of these joints and there's at least 15 dudes hot boxing that shit at like 10 a.m. You come in trying to take a piss and now you got a head rush. You you, you walk over to the urinals, but it's so goddamn hot box, you start pissing all over the walls. But shit, you can't even piss on the walls in peace, man. You got that one fiend coming over to you trying to suck your device dry and dude's so down bad for that hit that that's not the only thing he'd suck dry and listen you may be thinking chains uh how do you know what you know about vaping and that's a great question back in the day i was a curious little george man and back in grade seven i was chilling at my friend becky's house and when i walked into becky's crib i was nothing but an innocent curious young man but little did i know i would leave becky's crib 
far different than I entered. So you know, me, Bob, and Billy are posted in Becky's room, and I was sitting with Becky, so Becky asked me, have you ever hit a vape before? Hell no, I hadn't, but you know I had to play it cool around Becky, so I said, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I do that shit all the time. And so, of course, she passes me the vape. And honestly, I didn't think this far ahead, but I was in way too deep to come clean now. So I put that shit in my mouth, and I sucked the fuck out of it. Pause. And because this was the first time anything had made contact with my lungs beside oxygen, my lungs started malfunctioning. And I was coughing up a storm, and my cool guy cover was blown, but... I had to see it through. Oh my god, are you okay? <coughs> this shit ain't nothing for a guy like me. Guys, guys, I had to change his dying. And as I went on with my life, I would hit a device here and there, and eventually I even learned some tricks and shit. But one day, me and my homie had to run to catch a bus. And so we start running, but the homie doesn't even make it a hundred meters, and he starts rolling on the floor, coughing up blood. And I was like, yeah, no, yeah, yep, yeah, no, no, fuck that. And you know... I haven't touched a vape ever since, man. So stay safe and breathe air for real. Aw, can I pet your dog? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Aw, what's your name, little guy? His name's Ben. Ben. Aw, he, he's so cute. I just... I, I just wanna... I, I just wanna punt that motherfucker. Man, these intrusive thoughts I be having make me wonder whether I belong in maximum security prison or not. Like, I don't even mean to, but the thoughts that pop into my head are so menacing that I can't even say this shit on YouTube. Or this video will get taken down. Then I'll be cancelled. Then my whole channel will get deleted. Then I'll be thrown into a psych ward. And then I'll be put on the fucking death penalty. Like, these thoughts that pop into my head are so alarming that they make me want to beat my own ass, bro. Hey, man, uh... Well Why'd you just sock yourself in the face? Oh, well, what well, we see, I was about to push that unsuspecting toddler into the deep end for no apparent reason, so... <laughs> Yo, this guy's about to assault a minor. Hey, you can't oh, do I'll that. Really well, back. But it's not like every single intrusive thought I have is bad enough to get me convicted. Like, whenever I'm walking across a bridge, I have to use every cell in my body to fight the urge of just tossing my phone into the water. Like, there is literally no benefit from doing that shit, but there's just something inside of me that would feel so much sad satisfaction with just seeing my phone dissipate into the water you know maybe you get that urge because it would just be satisfying to do some shit that's out of the box some shit that nobody else would do just to just to break the simulation a little bit because i could be having the best day of my life i could wake up get the meanest pump in hop in the shower eat the most fire breakfast and draw the most pristine stickmen i've ever drawn but as i'm casually walking beside a bunch of cars that are going 65 miles miles an hour i'm still gonna have the urge to just throw myself in front of a car bro and it's not even on some emo shit like i want to live but i also want to dive into some oncoming traffic but at least i'm not the only one who does this like you like other people do this uh, right L like it's normal right but half the time an intrusive thought will just be to do some goofy shit like you're just forced to imagine the consequences of what it would look like to start throwing it back on a tuesday at 2 41 p.m and every once in a while you'll just be chilling and you'll witness a motherfucker fall to the intrusive urges what are you oh, get along the table, no. bro. shit he let the intrusive thoughts win man now i don't even know if these count as intrusive thoughts or not but as a dude when i'm walking down the street i'll just be going on with my day chilling then all of a sudden i see a car and i'm like if i don't make it to that tree before this car i'm gonna die ah <laughs> oh, shit honestly these kinds of intrusive thoughts are are kind of motivating like it's the same thing as having a hype man at the gym except instead of that positive reinforcement if you don't get those three extra reps you're gonna die it's like whenever i'm at the gym hitting those bulgarian split squats i'd be having mental wars with myself Oof, that was a good set, man. I think we're done. Five more reps or you're a bitch. Damn, good shit. All right, I think we can wrap it up. Ten more, pussy. Who the fuck's gonna carry the boats? <laughs> I told you we should have stopped, bro. Fifteen more or you like dick. Now that I think about it, there's a good amount of people in prison right now who just succumb to their intrusive thoughts. Because intrusive thoughts are just like that demon on your shoulder telling you to do the most devious shit possible. And I know there's a bunch of motherfuckers out there who just listen to that little guy. Hey, man, you see that lovely old lady right there? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna hit her with a mean right hook. Hmm, well, well what's in it for me? Nothing.
shit all right but to be honest there is a handful of times where i've let the intrusive thoughts take over one of the most memorable was way back when i was five years old me and my older brother were just dicking around doing some five-year-old shit keep in mind this story takes place before your boy had even developed consciousness so i was just a little munchkin doing munchkin shit then suddenly this urge came over me it, it was unlike anything i'd ever felt before it, it was dark irresistible and for no apparent reason i bit my brother's arm and this was probably the most satisfied i'd ever felt in my entire life but it was followed by shame and regret because i had no excuse ow why, why the fuck did your dumbass just bite me bro um i I felt like it and one of my lowest IQ moments of all time took place when I was in grade 8 it was goddamn sewing class bro and I remember I was having a particularly miserable day so I was just going through the motions we were all gathered around this big table with our sewing machines some fabric and some scissors I remember I was working on some shitty little big chungus stuffy but on this particular day the sewing machine cable was looking it was looking mad thick and juicy and like i said i was having a bad day which is exactly why the intrusive thoughts decided to catch me at my worst psst, psst, do it what to, to, to do what oh you know what to do you're the one with the scissors in your hand buddy H how did these even get in my hand now cut it cut it chains no wh wh why the fuck would i the wire exploded with smoke and my heart dropped so fast bro and everyone around the table just stares me down and i'm thinking i can somehow cover this shit up like i didn't just take some fucking scissors and snip that shit like an umbilical cord maybe i could convince the teacher the cord snipped itself or some shit but as i look down at the scissors in my hand there's literally a chunk missing from the scissors they look like they survived world war ii but barely the scissors are all charred up and shit and just like that my plan of convincing her i didn't cut it went out the fucking window you take one look at the cord one look at the scissors and one look at my dumbass face and you could piece together exactly what happened so my sewing teacher walks over looking pissed as hell and she tells me to go sit in the corner so i take my charred scissors and sit in the corner like i'm a five-year-old but to be fair I made a five-year-old decision like I was in grade eight. I was 14, bruh. What kind of 14-year-old cuts the cord to a sewing machine because he felt like it? Like if my 14-year-old son did some shit like that, I would tell the kid I'm going to get some milk and I'm calling it quits. I would have to have another kid and try it all over again because that kid is going nowhere in life, man. So as I'm sitting in the corner realizing I'm a disappointment, it was one of those moments where you fucked up so bad you don't even feel any emotions. I was just sitting there straight faced like, well fuck me it was really one of those moments where you just you, you just want to stop existing so after the class ended the teacher came over to me and she said chains why the fuck did you cut the cord of the sewing machine no miss sewingson you, you gotta hear me out okay this better be good chains it was looking mad juicy and the scissors just teleported into my hands i don't, I don't even know you did what ah mom it, it was the intrusive thoughts that, that they told me to do oh, it. i'm about to intrude that ass the fuck okay oh oh okay uh -uh. oh yeah oh yeah baby let's go let's go let's yeah let's go now i don't know why but there's just some things we all did as kids and it's not like any of these things actually make sense but 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 we just did them like did you even have a childhood if you never dug a hole to china <laughs> timmy timmy we're almost there yay just two more minutes i mean kids are just some dumbasses, bro like who's gonna tell little timmy he's not digging through the earth's core with this little rinky dink ass shovel but to be completely honest out of all these dumbasses, i was probably the stupidest kid known to man like i remember when i was five and i, I was taking my annual shower you know and all of a sudden i had realized i was a fucking superhero it, it was just the way the water was flowing out of my fingertips it, it was like nothing i'd ever seen before and i was fucking hyped i mean from this point on my new name was water boy wow <laughs> 
I was pretty fucking stupid, but not everything I did as a kid was completely impractical. For example, I know you used to run up the stairs on all fours, bro. Like, this was just the most efficient way to get from point A to point B. I used to feel like a fucking cheetah going up those stairs. In fact, going up the stairs in this manner was so efficient, I asked myself, well, well, why don't people go down the stairs like this? And shit, I, I figured out why. Or bro, on a hot summer day, I would wait for my mom to whip out the fan. And as soon as she turned that bitch on, me and my brother would turn into the Migos. We were dropping hit after hit. L like, we were spending so much time talking into this fan, our mom was a little concerned. Raindrop. Drip. Drop top. Drop top. Smoking no cookie in a hot box. Cookie. Fucking on your bitch. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Cooking up though for in a crock pot. Pot. Uh, uh, hey guys, uh, you, you've been there for six hours. I think it's time. Ma, to ma, let them cook. Let them cook. Bad and bougie. Cooking up dope with the Uzi. Hey! And speaking of cooking, when Mama Chains would whip up some good old craft dinner, I had no choice but to put a piece of KD on each prong of the fork. Like, that shit just simply tasted better, bro. Or whenever I was walking on a sidewalk, I would strategically plan out each footstep to make sure I was not stepping on a crack. Now, the funny thing about this one is... <laughs> I still do that shit, and I know some of y'all are gonna think I'm weird for that, but riddle me this. Who's gonna be laughing when your mom's in the ER with a broken back, bitch? Now, I feel like at one point or another in your life, you just had to check if the fridge light stayed on when you close it. It's really just a part of growing up. Like, one day you'll go grab some milk for your Honey Nut Cheerios, and you'll be like, Hey, wait a minute. Hmm. Hmm. Or what about when you were bored in the car and you start doing parkour with your fingers to the window? I used to hit some crazy combos and then I would go to finish it off with a backflip. Ah. Or have you ever fucked around in the living room and, and you broke a vase or some shit? Whoop. You know, you get a timeout or you receive a little whooping. Now coming out fresh off that whooping, this shit could only go one of two ways. Either you ball your eyes out and play with this fucking thing for hours, or you would plan to run away, bro. That, that was it. That was your only options. And I had a few of those moments where I was ready to dip. I would pack an apple and my trusty Minecraft sword for the trials and tribulations to come. And then I would look my sweet mother in the eyes and realize... Shit, she's making mac and cheese tonight. I, I can't leave yet. And you have simply not lived if you never hit a DS under your pillow at night. Like for me, the Mario grind was 24-7. There was no sleeping. But I'm not gonna lie, I had some close calls trying to pull that shit off. Good night, Chains. Sweet dreams. Good night, Ma. Love you. Love you too. Fuck. And god damn, bro, in grade one, we would be doing anything but schoolwork. Like, we'd be poking holes in our erasers, injecting heroin with mechanical pencils, drawing this shit, and breaking this shit off mechanical pencils. I'm not gonna lie, you still gotta keep me away from those things, because if I see them... I will break them. And yo, I'm not gonna forget you motherfuckers who used to put glue on your hands and let it dry so you could peel it off. Like, bro, you're weird for that shit. I'm not gonna lie. But I did used to love crafting the biggest marker sword you could and have a duel. And I don't know why, but I always used to carry around this tiny ass pencil. Like, I never actually used it, but I always had it. And I used to flex it too, thinking it was cool or something. Yo, shorty. T take a look at my pencil. Oh my god, uh, why is it so tiny? Tiny? It it's not that small. And bro, tell me as a kid that you never had the random urge to just do this shit. <clears throat> and you just stay there. I don't know why. And I'm not gonna lie, I have to contribute my entire professional stickman career to drawing on the windows as a kid. Like, Mini Chains was whipping up some masterpieces. They were on some Picasso level shit, which is exactly why you see this high quality stickman content. Alright, next up we got Billy presenting his baking soda volcano experiment. <laughs> hey, hey guys, how we doing? Alright, so uh, you see if I put a, a solid amount of baking soda in here and then uh, a little bit of vinegar here. <clears throat> um, uh, it's supposed to explode. Oh, oh shit. fuck. Quickly, 
Organize a single file line in alphabetical order. Hey, I'm first. No, you're not, bro. I'm first. Your last name is literally Johnson. I have two last names. Listen, bro. I'm not saying we shouldn't have school drills and all, but what I am saying is the school drills we do have are straight bullshit. Like, if there was a fire in my class, I'm jumping straight out the window, the fuck? There is no way you'll catch me waiting for Alexander and Arnold to debate who's first in line while I'm out here getting sautéed. And shit, fire our drills aren't even close to being the worst of the drills because we got lockdown drills. Now, I don't know who planned out these drills, but god damn, these drills are ass. Now, if you never had lockdown drills, they're pretty much a foolproof plan set in place to completely counter anyone pulling up to school with a strap. You see, the plan is pretty simple. You lock the door, gather all the students into the corner of the class, and you turn the lights out. And the reason we turn the lights out is so we can politely tell the intruder that nobody's home. Now, if every classroom followed these steps perfectly, we might even be able to convince the dude that it's a pro D-Day or something. Now listen, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I really do, but there's one minor flaw in this plan. The, the, the shooter's in the class, bruh. You're out here telling the opposition your exact game plan. Then you're surprised when bro pulls up to the hiding spot. Like shit, it's just easy pickings at this point. Now, earthquake drills, man. The game plan here is to essentially hop under your desk and start counting. Now, when I was in kindergarten, I thought this whole earthquake drill thing was a fun game we played to learn how to count. But 12 years later, we were still counting. Like, let's be honest. What the fuck is counting gonna do? Are you telling the earthquake how long it has to dis? dismantle the school because i'm pretty sure it doesn't give a shit how long it takes me personally i feel like the best way to see if an earthquake is over is by observing whether or not the entire fucking building is shaking but listen i will say this out of all the drills the earthquake drill is pretty valid like whoever thought of this one was kind of cooking i mean these desks are pretty much made out of steel bro like out of all my years i've never seen one break before so it probably provides some solid protection but shit, me personally, I'm still jumping through the fucking window, bruh. I don't care how many times I practice crouching under my desk. If I ever felt the slightest shake in the ground, I'm out of that hole. So if you carry the 674 to the power of 2 over to the 47, you will find- Oh shit! Well, well, why did change just dive out of the window? Shit, I don't know. Now I'm gonna keep it a stack. I've never done a single tornado drill in my life. So after doing some quick research, it looks like you just, um, you, you, you do this. Now I don't know shit about tornadoes, but what I do know is that I'm not gonna be doing this shit. Like, I'm no scientist, but I don't think the doggy position is gonna stop the tornado from packing you up. So to be honest, once again, I'm jumping out the fucking window, bro. Like, that's just my default reaction. And if that tornado ends up putting me on a t-shirt, then so be it. At least the last position I was in before I died was not the face down, cheeks up pose. But bro, imagine being the kid who poorly timed his piss and now the fire alarm's going off midstream. And you don't even get to know if it's a drill or not. Then there's the whole do you wash your hands dilemma, right? Cause, cause you don't want to get trapped in the fire and fucking die. But on the other hand... You don't want to just not wash your hands. Because if it's a drill, then, then then you're just left with dirty ass hands. And while you're trying to decide whether to wash your hands or not, the class is outside taking attendance like... Rosalina. Here. Jared. Here. Chains. Chains? Oh, fuck. W -w where did Chains go? I don't know, bruh. Shit. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah, I was just in the bathroom. Ooh, oh, oh you, you scared me there for a second. Wait. Did, did, did you wash your hands? Mm, no. I, I was in a little bit of a rush. <laughs> Get back in there and wash your hands, buddy. Uh... Now, the thing about school drills is they happen pretty often. I mean, every few weeks, they throw in a fire drill here and a little earthquake drill there. So when the fire bell actually goes off, motherfuckers just assume it's a drill. They're out here horsing around, making jokes and shit, while the school's actually getting fucking cremated. But after almost all the drills, our alphabetical single file line goes out to the front of the school and on the field with every other class. And the amount of buffoonery that goes down on this field is insane. 
insane, bro. I mean, everyone walks in with a single file line, but after five minutes, that shit looks like a Travis Scott concert, bro. Like, I remember one time my high school got a bomb threat called in, so every class assembled the good old alphabetical line, and we went out onto the field. And we were out there for a minute, bro. I remember looking around, and these motherfuckers were running the world's biggest game of Duck Duck Goose. Like, there wasn't a whole ass bomb threat called into our school. That same day, one kid brought a football to the field, and all of a sudden, motherfuckers are running a pickup game while we're waiting to see if our school is gonna explode or not. And of course, the teachers tried to stop it, but these kids just used that as a diversion play and got another touchdown. Alright, so now that we thoroughly dissected each and every school drill, it's only fair we hit them with a tier list. So let's see what we got here. Uh, oh, oh, we're starting with lockdown drills. What, what are we saying? Uh, fucking F tier. Holy shit, they are ass. <clears throat> All right. Uh, ne next up, we got fire drills. Now these drills do get the job done, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm not fucking with this whole single file alphabetical bullshit. So I'm gonna have to give this John a C tier. Now tornado drills. Uh, you, you gotta go in the doggy position, bro. I got no choice but to give this a D tier. And last but not least, my personal favorite, earthquake drills. Th they're still kind of ass b tier and bro i know some of y'all may be thinking you you can't just talk shit about the school drills and, and not present any better solution well lucky for you i have devised the best and only way to fully counter any natural or artificial disasters it's simple for a guy like me who's seven feet 325 pounds 0.5 percent body fat and a seven foot wingspan i just simply remove myself from the situation however i do understand that i am built different so for your average joe i have devised another plan it's also simple the moment some shit goes down everyone runs at full speed out of the building and of course some would argue that not everyone is gonna be able to make it out of the building in time and that some people are fast and stronger than others and you know what that's called natural selection you see if i was principal instead of running students through these impractical drills i would be running students through a different kind of drills i would have my students in peak physical condition instead of a fire bell i would have a push-up bell at any given time if that shit goes off you drop down and give me 50 or your ass is getting expelled you see this way when there's a fire everyone can simply remove themselves from the situation or in other circumstances they can simply intervene <laughs> 